Yo, 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 ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a new video, man. We're doing KSI today, man. So if you're brand new, be sure to subscribe or react to this shit together. I haven't even watched it yet, so we're going to be watching it together, man. So without further ado, let's jump straight into it. Before that, make sure you subscribe and drop a like, baby. And um, yeah, let's see what uh, my man KSI has for us today, bro. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you're about sorry. And I got cooked. You lot ate me alive, man. You uh, lot ate me. Oh, wait, is he talking? Lunch and dinner. Oh, bro, it was outrageous. I know what, wait, I think I know what he's talking about. I think he's talking about the, the training footage which he released when he's training for Joe Fournier. The amount of hate and people criticizing me, I mean, rightly so, and I appreciate everyone. Well, I appreciate most of the people that went in on me because, you know, you guys aren't uh, just going to be up my ass. Some of you went a bit too far. I think someone was saying I need to get beat up by Jake Paul. I need to lose to Jake Paul. I was like, nah. I don't know if it's that deep. <laughs> <laughs> we'll look at the Reddit anyway. Uh, yeah, let's, let's just get straight into it. We stand with Wade. Uh, yeah, there was obviously a lot of people who were on Wade's side. Uh, and rightfully so, like, my outburst on Twitter was just outrageous, I'm sure. Wait, bro, are you wearing a shirt? Are you just wearing a hoodie, no shirt? Damn, man. Let's go there. Yeah, there is. Man, fuck Wade. This Wade guy plays all sides, trying to please everyone. You are so fake. Oh, my God. Fuck you and everything you stand for, you two-faced. Damn, man. This man acts like he knows everything about boxing. He doesn't know shit. You're not that guy. I can't believe Sharky let this snake into my bones. Fuck off. Alright, so the amount of people who thought I was trolling, I genuinely was serious. Like, obviously now I've apologized. This is out of order. This was crazy. But but yeah, I was furious because I heard from so many people telling me about how Wade is, you know, saying one thing to this man. Who the fuck is Wade, bro? I don't even know this, what nothing, these guys are talking about. Saying, you know what I'm saying? Probably, and it's just all over the place. And just like, what's going on? And I think what really triggered me was when he said uh, that Tommy Fury versus Jake was going to get more pay-per-view buys than me versus Jake. That's not true. I felt like, oh, I don't know. It depends. Not undervalue me. I thought this was a disrespect to me, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, but he works for Misfits. I don't, I'm confused. I'm not about this, blah, blah, blah. So basically, ultimately, it was just a lot of back and forth. And then he made his video, and then I was like, am I going to do what I do all the time and fight fire with fire, or should I actually speak to the man? <laughs> That's boxing talk, bro. Fight fire with fire. That's what they say, bro, in boxing, you know what I'm saying? Should I actually call the man? Should I actually call Wade and be like, yo, let me hear it from your voice? Because, you know, beforehand, I would always be hearing stuff from Wade through other people. It was never be me talking to him directly. We'd always just be talking indirectly. So I, you know, messaged Wade. I was like, send me your number. I called him. And I just realized, yeah, I just, it's, the whole thing has just been a misunderstanding. Wade's a really nice guy. And none of the stuff I said here makes sense for Wade. Like, Wade wants what I want. Success in the YouTube boxing influencer scene. Like, yeah, cool. bro. I wanna join in in that in that in that scene. You know what I'm saying? Cause you know what I'm saying. Look at out, my guy. You know what I'm saying? Both won that. So me saying and doing all of this, uh, it was just it was an L. It was a huge L, and I'm sorry. And I appreciate all my fans and all the people on Reddit going in on me, being like JJ moving mad. This is outrageous. I can't believe this. Blah blah blah. Uh, saying they've lost respect for me, but well, it's all warranted, and you know I appreciate you lot for um, telling me how it is, and that's how I've always wanted you lot to be. Tell me how it is. If I mess up, tell me I've messed up, and uh, if I if I succeed, you know I you guys will sing my praises. So I appreciate you lot, you lot for um, for yeah for being real with me. This was album, and also I just realised that this man is in two faces. Well, like while I was talking to. He's, you know, says what he says 
privately and publicly, and I just got it twisted. <laughs> I just heard the wrong things from my sources, and it just complicated things and obviously created this whole situation. Obviously, Jay Paul thought he could pipe up, saying, this you talking about a reporter that worked to his own shows, you are regressing maturity-wise. You remind me of me when I was 19, but you were about to be 30. Apologize to Wade and fire the unprofessional man. Oh, wait. Wait, is Wade, was Wade coach, coach Larry Wade? Is that is that what they're talking about? Because <clears throat> I remember I watched the Jake, I was watching the Jake Paul fight, and the guy who was commentating was Ray Flores, Showtime Sean Porter, and Coach Larry Wade. I don't know if that's that's the, I don't know if that's that's the guy they're talking and so about. And then I replied with a tweet Maybe. from Jake Paul himself saying, "Get rid of anyone that plays both sides, no matter how much they mean to you." Loyalty to everyone is loyalty to no one. And I literally put this you. <laughs> Basically, J. Paul contradicting himself. I mean, ultimately, the whole thing is an L anyway. <laughs> I should talk about J. Paul. Me and him went on a major back and forth. I thought it was funny. Well, actually, let me explain from the beginning. So I tweeted, when I KO Joe Fournier, uh, I will be pound for pound the best YouTube boxer. Yes, above Jake Paul. And I truly believe that because let's not get it twisted. Joe Fournier is a 9-0 pro that I'm fighting May 13th. Yeah, man. I'm not going to lie. That's a big step up. Whoa, 6 million views. 30,000 likes. It should have been 100K, but... The best YouTube boxer. Yes, above Jake Paul. And I truly believe that because let's not get it twisted. Joe Fournier is a 9-0 pro that I'm fighting May 13th. And it's not going to be easy. Like, I'm borrowing people like Idris, Idris Virgo, and other pros in my camp to make sure, you know, I'm prepared for Joe Forney because, you know, the man has the experience, you know, has way more experience than me. He's a better boxer than me. So, you know, I know, like, yes, I've got fitness and I know my defense needs work. I'm working on my defense. It's going to be a hard fight. Head it's going to be a hard fight. Work right? on your foot. Work on your feet work, bro, because you're a 175 pounder now, right? 175 pounder. Whereas before, in 2019, when you are fighting Logan Paul, you were like 190 pounder, a cruiserweight, bro, almost heavyweight. But now you're a slight heavyweight. So that means you're lighter. So that means I would recommend more footwork, you know, more dancing, you know. And, um, yeah, you know, and head movement too. Up and down. You know that. Like, I'll, I'll recommend bringing Alexander Rusek into your camp or Vasily Lomachenko just to offer some footwork, you know what I'm saying? Because if you've seen what Alexander Rusek did to Anthony Joshua, man, you know what I'm saying? Joshua was a big, strong guy, but he just couldn't land the power shots because of the feet, you know what I'm saying? Because the feet is very important in boxing, you know what I'm saying? Because if you have very good footwork, you'll never get knocked out, you know what I'm saying? Because... You don't allow the power punches to get set to land power shots. And I also want the people to know that, you know, if I beat Joe Fournier, fam, I'm number one pound for pound. Like, I don't get it twisted because Jay Paul tried to fight a pro boxer and failed uh, against Tommy Fury. You know, if I managed to beat Joe Fournier, I'm just saying, put me on that number one, bro. I'm number one <laughs> straight up. <laughs> The you have to fight Tommy Fury. Ha, 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 ha. I'm your idol. So when you beat a guy whose last pro fight was over two years ago against a reggaeton singer that had never boxed in his life, you are the powerful pound best? Or is it because his fight before that was six years ago against a 1-11 to 11 boxer? Sham. Jake Paul is trying to say that Joe Fournier uh, isn't all that. Uh, but Tommy Fury is all that. When, if you look at Tommy Fury's box rank. Yeah, Tommy Fury, I don't know, man. He's, an, he's, he's not all that, you know what I'm saying? He doesn't have power, man. These guys don't have power, man, you know what I'm saying? Jack Paul, I was watching the interview. He said in the interview before the fight that he was just going to go in there and beat him down, you know what I'm saying? He let, I'm, I, will, I mean, Jack Paul did land some overhand rights, but they didn't do anything. Tommy Fury ate him well, you know what I'm saying? That's because Jack Paul got drained here to weight drain here to go down to 185 pounds so it was slightly lower than the cruiserweight and even if you see both of them in the way in jake paul looks tiny and tommy fury looks massive bro especially his shoulders they look big man my man is 
fine. Big. It's like Jake Paul is initially bigger man, but Tommy just looked bigger though. Like, you know? who have won 10 times and lost 102 times. Never won and lost 26 times. Won two, lost 26 <laughs> times. Never won <laughs> and lost 11 times. Never won. <laughs> Wait, dude, this is what I do as well in my spare time, right? I go on box track and just check, like, a resume. Won and know? lost nine times. Like, I mean, you can't tell me that Tommy Fury hasn't done the exact same as what Joe Fournier has done. You know, all these fighters, they, yes, they fight opponents to pad off their records. But ultimately, they're the main guy. They're the tough fighter. They're the tough boxer. And I, May 13th, I'm fighting that tough boxer. And just like Jay Paul, he was fighting the main guy, Tommy Fury. And, and he failed. Yeah. So yeah. I'm about to do the same with Joe Fournier and hopefully not fair. So I don't understand how Jake is trying to shit on Joe Fournier when Jake dodged Joe Fournier anyway. <laughs> like Joe Fournier was fighting on Jake Paul's undercard. And Joe Fournier called Jake Paul out. And Jake Paul decided to fight. Who did he decide to fight instead? Uh, Tyron Woodley. I'm just saying, there's a reason why Jake Paul fights MMA fighters. <laughs> and not pro boxers. That's his kryptonite. Pro boxers are his kryptonite. Believe it or not. <laughs> anyway, I replied with, uh, this is a lot of talk for someone that's ducking me. <laughs> pro boxers have been doing it all their life. Oh man, please. I hope the computer doesn't. I feel like he's ducking me. If he doesn't rematch Tommy Fury, who else is he going to fight? He has to fight me. I'm ready. After Joe Fox. So puppy. If I manage to beat him, I'm ready. And then if I don't, then we'll find out who the best YouTube boxing influencer is of all time. So I'm ready to fight Jake Paul. Simple as that. And then Jake's coming through with these stupid money offers again. Be like, five million to the winner, zero to the loser. If you want me to agree to your request of 180 pounds, and rehydration clause. Agree to that and I'm in. You just supposedly bet 10 million pounds, so this should be easy to contract, right? So yeah, this was because Joe Fournier was like, oh, I'll offer 10 million to buy Misfits. And I'm like, Misfits is worth way more than 10 million. Plus, if you wanna bet 10 million pounds, we can bet 10 million pounds. I don't care about the money. Money isn't the reason why I'm doing this. I want to do this to show. Shit, bro. That's, that's some good stuff, right? That's deep, man. You know what I'm saying? That's a lot of money, too, bro. That's life-changing money, bro. 10 million. Doesn't care about 10 million, bro. That could last me like a couple of lifetimes, bro. God damn. This guy is just talking like it's nothing, bro. Do you see this guy? Is this guy normal, man? What? 10 million. Plus, <laughs> if you want to bet 10 million pounds, we can bet 10 million pounds. I don't care about the money. Money isn't the reason why I'm doing this. I want to do this <laughs> to show that I am the GOAT in this YouTube boxing scene. Mm. So you're the GOAT? Mm? Yeah, you're the GOAT in the 180, in the cruiserweight division. But who is the GOAT in the heavyweight division? The heavyweight YouTube boxer. Right now, I'm currently in the heavyweight division. I'm trying to get down to cruiser. So we'll see. I, I don't know. I'm just tired of Jake Paul always doing the, oh, let's bet money, this, this, that, that. Because he didn't pay uh, Tommy Fury. They had an agreement to, you know, do a winner takes all. And that fell flat. That's exactly what I said. I said, ain't no way I'm doing this deal because you still ain't paid off for your last deal with Tommy Fury after he slapped you up. I, I can't be bothered. Like, let's just fight. Stop going back and forth. Let's just do it. And he's complaining about 180. Be like, oh, you know, I don't want to fight at 180. I want to fight at 185. Bro, look at this video. Look at this video that I posted. I posted this. J Paul has been capping. No, oh, I shouldn't weight drain him because the, the less weight he has, the less power he's going to have. You know what I'm saying? And that's just how it is. He'll probably end up at light heavyweight at 175. Um, and that's, you know, where I should be. Case I will come to London. I will weigh 100. It was it's been capping for years. Probably end up. At light heavyweight at 175. Um, and That's Dimitri Bivo and Whoa, also better be at this division. Video, look at this video that I posted. I posted this. J Paul has been capping for years. Probably end up at light heavyweight at 175. Um, and that's, you know, where I should be. KSI will come to London. I will weigh 180 pounds for the fight. You could be the A side. Okay. Look at he has a seat. That's 79 kilograms, I think. <laughs> So, so you would like a meet in the middle for KSI? You would meet in the middle, like 180? Mm, 
Wait a minute. What's going yes, on? I will come to London. I will weigh a hundred. <laughs> He's realizing that the weight draining rod is tough, man. It takes a lot out of you. Mm, 185. <laughs> Wait a minute. So you're going like to meet in the middle for KSI? You would meet in the middle like 180? One eighty-five. <laughs> Wait a minute. What's going yes, on? I will come to London. I will weigh hundred eighty pounds. Wait, when you for logging you were one ninety-three. Also, why didn't you just go up to one ninety and cruise away? Weigh hundred eighty pounds. Stop the cap. Bro, for real, like he's just <laughs> constantly chatting shit. I don't understand how his audience just eat up all this shit. That comes out of his mouth all the time. This guy wants it to be a pro fire, find out 175, and now he wants to find me at 185. Like, what are we doing? Let's be in the middle, 180. That's perfect for me and him. 180. Like, what the hell? So, yeah, we just went back and forth. And then eventually he just aired my request to sign a contract to just fight. So, look, honestly, at this point, Jake don't want it. <laughs> 180, Which yeah. is hilarious because Jake was seen as the guy, the goat. He's the pound for pound best YouTube boxer of all time, and he doesn't want to fight me <laughs> because why? Because he's scared, man. This guy is scared. He's been scared. He's been scared. Of me. <laughs> Doing been this scared. Tweet Twitter doesn't mean shit. Uh, so I tweeted saying talk to Wade and this time I'm actually sorry so I did apologize before but it was like a tongue-in-cheek apology <laughs> and it's so funny because a lot of my audience can see right through it it's so hard for me to just <laughs> be like fake because <laughs> you lot can just read it so so clearly because I, I still felt a type of way uh, because of the whole situation so then yeah obviously I just talked to him uh, legit, this whole thing has been a big misunderstanding. We both want the same thing. Success for everyone in the influencer boxing scene. Wade is a good guy. I messed up completely. My bad, man. And it's true. I, I messed up completely. POV, you have an opinion during a good side fire. <laughs> oh, my God. Look, I don't want people to think that if you have an opinion, that's against me or anyone that is a part of Misfits that you're gonna get fired. Man's messed up publicly firing Wade. That was bad, that was bad. You know, Wade can easily come and commentate whenever he wants, he can do whatever he wants at Misfits. He's his own man, he can have his own opinions. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, I feel like a lot of people got mixed up thinking that I fired Wade when uh, my manager did. But look, I don't want you to go in on my manager because let's be honest, with the whole of Misfits and you know everything that he's he's done for me, he goes through a lot. Okay, it's a stressful, it's a stressful job. It's a stressful situation. We're also human. <laughs> okay, we're gonna mess up. Everyone's gonna mess up. No one, because of this situation, no one needs to die or get told they should kill themselves. <laughs> All we can do is learn from our mistakes. And then move on. So you sound like a wise old man, guess I, I like it, man. Boys, if you're still watching, be sure you subscribe to my channel right now and drop a like, baby. Please do it right now. You can have an opinion, okay? <laughs> you can have an opinion on anything you want. All right? It doesn't mean you're getting fired on this. Ultimately, we all just want Misfits to grow. We just want Misfits to be this huge company that has a lot of entertaining fights and has a lot of entertaining events. Yes, it gets sir. people excited and gas. To we'll bring Misfits to Australia, my guy, you know what I'm saying? And feature me, you know what I'm saying? Be humbled. Make posts supporting Wade. Make KSI realize he made a mistake and get this man a belt. Oh my god. <laughs> you lot outrageous, man. KSI to do list. Apologize to Wade. I mean, I've done that. Lower his ego. When it comes to boxing, I feel like you have to have an ego. You have to believe in yourself. Mm. If you don't believe in yourself, you're in the wrong spot. That's right, my guy. You know what I'm saying? Every man in the room has to feel like they're the best. Otherwise, they're in the wrong sport. Because that's a dangerous sport. Because you're putting your life on the line each and every second you're in there. Because one punch can end your life, my guy. Because we've seen so many guys dying from punches. Well, <laughs> I don't know. Surely I'm correct in that thinking. The reason why I... As I say, boxing is the most dangerous sport today, which is allowed. 
Whereas before, in ancient times, it was like the Roman gladiator sport. That was the most brutal. But now today, in modern society, the most brutal one is boxing, bro. <laughs> because I train so hard to the point where I feel like I've done every single thing to make sure I'm prepared and ready for my fight. Mm. And because of that, my confidence is high, my ego is high. That's because I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready to fight. You know, if I was like, oh, I might win or, you know, I'm not too sure, then yes, I can understand. And, you know, maybe I'm doing a little bit of that with Joe Fournier because the guy's a, <laughs> it's a fucking pro fighter. I'll tell you one thing, man. If you have any doubts before the fight, just make sure you remove all those doubts before fight night because if you have, they can start creeping up on you, man. And if you have doubts, bro, that can cause the biggest problem. Just make sure you have no doubts on the night of the fight. <laughs> like, it's not going to be... You got to face them head on, bro. You can't have any doubts in the back of your mind. Especially when you're going up a guy like Joe Forney, he was a power puncher. And Joe Forney just recently fought David the Haymaker Hay. He went the distance with David Hay, the former undisputed cruiserweight champion and former heavyweight champion, two division one champion. David Hay, but he also got destroyed by Tony Belly. That's for another story. But Joe Forney has been in there with that guy, David Hay, you know what I'm saying? So David Hay is a massive power puncher. If you don't know him, check him out, bro. It's scary. I feel like a lot of people are telling me, like, it's going to be easy. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Because the last time I did that, you know, I drew with Logan Paul. <laughs> People were like, Joe, Logan Paul hasn't really boxed that much. You know, you've, you've boxed longer than him. You know, it's going to be light work. And then I came in with that mindset and I drew. And I almost lost. So from then on, I told myself I will never be complacent. And I'm going to train as hard as I can. And yeah, I'm going to make sure May 13th, I knock out Joe Fournier. Oh, is he talking about the Logan Paul fight? He almost lost. Really? You know, it's going to be light work. And then I came in with that mindset and I drew. And I almost lost. So from there. Ah, yeah, the first Logan Paul fight was a draw. Much. You know, you've, you've got longer than him. You know, it's going to be light work. And then I came in with that mindset and I drew. And I almost lost. So from then on, I told myself I will never be complacent. And I'm going to train as hard as I can. And yeah, I'm mm. going to make sure May 13th, I knock out Joe Fournier. Fireman's Taylor for not handling business properly and being childish and a yes man. I mean, no, I'm not going to fire Mams Taylor. <laughs> if I fire Mams Taylor, fam, Misfits goes into the bin. <laughs> mm. I don't think you understand how much Mams does for Misfits, how much Mams has done for my career. Like, when it comes to the music, before 2019, before I fought Logan Paul the second time, musically, what was happening? What happened musically for me? Nothing much, all right? Well, I had that bikini. Obviously, now that song has aged, like, fine wine. But at the time, people were saying it was cringe still. I mean, musically, I wasn't really doing much. I had Beerus with Randolph. Like, that was the, the, the next hit that I had. But, like, commercially, I was nowhere to be seen. And then Mams Taylor has taken me to a place I never thought I'd ever be in my life. With Mams Taylor, I was able to get number one album. With Mams Taylor, I was able to get so many top fives and top ten singles. With Mams Taylor, I was able to create T.O.T., the online takeover, you know, my own music label. With Mams Taylor, I was able to create Misfits. And look how much we've done with Misfits. You know, Mams Taylor, he helped me with Prime and, and all these things mm. like he god damn bro this guy is just so inspirational bro. he's doing so much man you know what i'm saying like he's just on another level you know what i'm saying like music youtube boxing you know what i'm saying <clears throat> so it's good to look after this guy you know what i'm saying me tremendously and because of this little you know misunderstanding you want me to fire man's like are you dumb <laughs> i'm sorry <clears throat> like that's it's so, so stupid i'm not going to ever do that <laughs> and mams is far from a yes man okay far from it yes he has my back he's my manager he's gonna always have my back but let's not get it twisted there's so many times i've come through with crazy ideas or crazy things and he said relax brother <laughs> what are you doing this is a bad idea don't do this don't do that etc and he's look we both helped each other along the way so Mm, that was good, humble. man. Look, I am humble. I'm a humble man. If you meet me, you'll know I'm a humble person. 
But when I'm in the ring, I'm not humble. <laughs> if I was humble in the ring, but I'd get knocked out every that's, time. <laughs> that's Manny Pacquiao, bro. This is, that's like a Manny Pacquiao. He's humble outside the ring, but inside the ring. He's a monster, man. He just takes whatever you give him, comes right back. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, and mods will remove this while out because the mods didn't remove this. <laughs> How the KSI way drama went down. Okay. Okay. JJ's pulling out Wade on Twitter. Wow, okay. Chris Rich, Myers, and Cruz seen everything crumble around. Wade, when he saw JJ. What? Yes. JJ found two analyzers, and now lost respect for him. Camel smoking. Shane McMahon. Camel smoking 14 videos and 200 tweets from the drama. <laughs> Fans of Jaden realizing the might as well let them marry away. No, no. Honestly, like, it wasn't even, like, the fans going in on me and all of this and that. It was just me, just, especially after seeing his video, just me going, man, maybe I'm not right. <laughs> maybe I need to just talk to him and figure out what is actually going on. <laughs> like, you've got to remember, I could have easily just not have done this video. Wait, this wait, bro. This nigga is sitting now. I thought he was standing, bro. Yeah, for the last couple of videos, that guy was standing, bro. Yeah. Boys, be sure you subscribe. Wait week, a week, two to my weeks, channel. three weeks, and then and drop a like. You already know. And obviously, this would have been old news, and then I wouldn't have talked about this. But I'm here talking about it because I know I messed up about Wade, and, you know, that's why I feel like I have to say something rather than just tweets as well. I have to hold myself accountable. But yeah. Yes. <laughs> Uh, trying to <laughs> changing the go case, uh, trying to justify JJ's actions on Twitter. <laughs> JJ the go case, uh, bro, you <laughs> you big time now. <laughs> case I is and JJ fans turning red into a fuck fest. God damn it, Cristiano he's laughing for another drama for his intro. And with that, I ended by Cristiano Ronaldo, man. I really hope you did enjoy, boys. And if you did enjoy, be sure you leave a like and subscribe, man. I love you as always. And make sure you check out all my other videos, man. Other than that, I'll catch you on the next video, baby. And I'm out, baby. Peace.